And Avik, what's your hunch here? Do you think there's a lot of abuse in the system going on? Absolutely. So this is possibly the most significant day in the history of U.S. health policy research, possibly ever, because we've never had this data before. And you have to go back and understand the history of the Medicare program. So when Medicare was passed in 1965, the American Medical Association opposed it because they were worried that it would lead to socialized medicine and doctors' pay would go down. So LBJ cut a deal with a doctor saying, you know what, we're going to let you charge whatever you want so long as you support Medicare. So they, they kept their mouths shut and went along with it. Now, ever since then, the American Medical Medical Association has blocked and sued to prevent this data com from coming out. Well, why are they so reluctant? Okay, answer that question. I think you were going there yourself. Why are they yeah, so reluctant? Yeah. So it, it shows that, that basically doctors often have a financial incentive to over-prescribe and over-use tests and over-utilize the system. Some doctors are the worst abusers, and that's uh, catching the headlines, but it's really the next 25 to 30 to 40 percent of physicians that's really driving the massive cost of Medicare and the reason why Medicare is at the center of the fiscal crisis we have. So the AMA has been complaining, said, well, some careers are going to get ruined by this. Well, some careers should get ruined by this, and it's a real black mark on the AMA that they fought so hard for so long to block this data from coming out. Yeah, in other out. words, if you don't have anything to hide, why exactly are you trying to hide it, Shannon? Well, exactly. And, yeah, and you raise an interesting point, Avik, because um, uh, you know a lot of this data has been kept private from the public, and Medicare has been able to see this data themselves and should be able to go after doctors themselves and crack down on this abuse. But they really haven't. There's a lot of people who say Medicare has not done a good job policing themselves, and part of that is because this program is a political hot potato. Uh, you know, everyone wants Medicare to go smoothly because it's a program for seniors, and no one wants to upset seniors who carry a lot of political clout. So people we talked to have said that, you know, Medicare hasn't been going after this fraud and waste and abuse on its own because they haven't wanted to upset doctors who might drop out of Medicare. They haven't wanted to upset seniors who would get their payments denied. So now this information is out there publicly and researchers and, and reporters and watchdog groups can actually take a look at it and go after it and possibly do some of the policing that that critics say Medicare hasn't been doing on its I mean, own. But that's what, that's one of the big questions here. I mean, other than, you know, the AMA fighting it, which they shouldn't have done, I, I think we're all very clear on that. And, you know, perhaps they, hopefully they've learned their lesson. What is it that you see in this data that we've seen thus far, Avik, that, that causes you some concern, that makes you suspicious, that makes you think that Medicare uh, is not really as transparent and as fair uh, as it should be? Well, anecdotally, we've known this for a long time, and not just anecdotally, actually. So if you look at certain pharmaceutical drugs and biotech drugs, the reason why they sell billions and billions of dollars in revenue, one of the examples that's been brought up today is Lucentis versus Avastin, manufactured both by Genentech, which is now owned by Roche. Those drugs often get used not because they're necessarily medically better, but because the doctors make a lot more money prescribing those drugs over the alternatives. So that's something that's been out there for a long time. It's one of the things that, uh, in my old life, as a Wall Street investor, I used to take into account in thinking about the revenue potential for various drugs. So we've known this for a long time. And, and not only is the crowdsourcing important, the thing that Shannon mentioned, but the fact that sunlight is the best disinfectant. Doctors are going to now know that if they overuse uh, these, uh, these drugs and these services, mm -hmm. it's going to be out there in the public domain and their reputations are going to be affected. And finally, last word to Shannon. I mean, just some of the most egregious things that you saw as you looked through this. I mean, you've got doctors who are allegedly ordering tests uh, because they get some kind of kickback just for ordering that test. Well, that's the concern out there. And there are some real clear outliers we can see in the data. Doctors who are making 100 times more than other doctors in the same specialty. But there should be a note of caution, which is that there could be very good reasons why doctors are doing what they're doing. And for example, one of the third highest paid doctors on there is a pathologist. Uh, we asked him, why do you have such a high payment for Medicare? He said, well, I'm the guy who does the billing for 27 other doctors. It's my name on the bill, but the money's not all going to me. You know, so we're going to find weird but At least you have the chance to find those abnormalities the and ask the, the questions. questions. For the first time, to ask the questions and find out what the reason